Welcome back to Madden Medicine. In this video, we're going to be discussing amyloidosis and amyloid deposition. If you haven't already done so, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel because your support means a lot to us and it allows us to keep posting these videos on a regular basis, especially for your educational content. With that being said, let's discuss amyloid. Amyloid is an abnormal aggregation of proteins that get configured in the beta pleated sheet position. That is usually what's happening. It's very important to understand that this is the beta pleated sheet position that, uh, that the proteins are getting stuck and configured in. And once that happens, amyloid proteins can actually precipitate into the tissues, especially the extracellular space, and they're going to precipitate as insoluble fibrils, meaning you can't really get rid of them. They can't really go through in the water or sorry, in the extracellular fluid space. It's just going to get deposited in the tissues. This deposition can lead to cellular damage and even cause apoptosis locally, and the deposition can be visualized by two main stain types. This is very important to understand because one of these stain types is a hallmark uh, like pathognomonic condition or pathognomonic give answer to uh, amyloid and amyloid deposition and that is Congo red staining. If you hear Congo red staining and it shows something that has apple green biofringents under polarized light, this is hallmark. Let's write that down. Hallmark for amyloid. Apple green biofringence uh, in polarized light with Congo red staining is pathognomonic for amyloid and amyloid deposition. Do not forget this. This is very high yield. It's a giveaway. It's easy point. Now, H&E stain can also show amyloid deposition, and it's usually going to be used when you're talking about the kidney. When you use H&E stain, you're going to see uh, glomerular mesangial deposition and deposition in the tubular basement membranes, but that's not as high yield. In my opinion, it has a Congo red staining because that is something, if you get it on the test, if you get it on any exam, boom, it should tell you exactly what you're talking about, exactly what the pathologic condition is. Now, once a deposition occurs, it cannot be removed. You cannot take away the deposition and the only way you can fix the damage that's happened in an organ is going to be through transplant. Transplant is the only known uh, uh, is the only known treatment for amyloid and systemic or localized or amyloid deposition. There are three main types of amyloidosis. You have the local amyloidosis, you have systemic amyloidosis, and you have hereditary amyloidosis, all of which we're going to discuss in this lecture. Now, really quickly, we're going to go back to the staining and we're going to show one quick photo. This is what uh, the bio, the, the apple green biorefringence looks like under uh, polarized light with Congo red staining. So I'm going to write this right here. So this is Congo red staining. Okay, with polarized light, polarized light, oh, polarized light, and this is the apple green birefringence, okay? As you can see, these green lumin luminescent uh, structures, that is showing you that you have amyloid deposition occurring. That is very, very important. So if you ever see a picture like this, and it looks vaguely familiar, and you see Congo red staining somewhere, you see polarized light and apple green birefringence, you know instinctively you are talking about amyloid and amyloid deposition. Remember that, commit that to your memory because that is very high yield. Now we're gonna talk about systemic amyloidosis. Systemic amyloidosis is uh, when you have tissue deposition of an abnormal protein that occurs systemically. That's essentially what the name implies, right? So this type of amyloidosis is occurring across the body. This is gonna lead to a very wide range of clinical symptoms and manifestations. It makes sense, right? You're talking about the entire body. You're talking about a systemic deposition. Well, then if you're talking about the systemic deposition, you're gonna have systemic uh, symptoms and that can be literally anything. And you can, divide systemic into primary and secondary types. So this is going to be based essentially off of the protein and the type of protein that gets deposited. The primary uh, uh, systemic amyloidosis is called AL amyloidosis. AL amyloid deposits, that is the type of uh, deposition that occurs. And then the secondary is SAA amyloid deposition. So let's talk about primary AL amyloid deposition. 
This occurs from the AL or the Ig light chains of immunoglobins. That is very important. So we are now discussing the light chains that are happening in our immunoglobins. Essentially, this is a deposition of those light chains. This can be seen in several conditions, but mainly you're going to see this in plasma cell disorders and multiple myeloma. Why is that the case? Well, plasma cell disorder and multiple myelomas deal with B cells and B cells create immunoglobins and antibodies, right? That's their main that's their main function. And if you're affecting these cells right here, you are going to upregulate the production of IgG, IgA, etc., and antibodies in general. So you're gonna cause a more likelihood of develop, uh, developing amyloidosis if those immunoglobins are not formed properly and the beta plated sheets are being deposited in the cells. Essentially, because you're creating more immunoglobins, you're more likely to develop AL amyloidosis because this is a condition of the Ig light chains, right? And that's what we have right here. Because of uh, an increase in immunoglobin production, you have more likelihood of developing amyloidosis. Secondary amyloidosis is AA amyloid deposition. This occurs from an amyloid protein called serum amyloid A. This is an acute phase reactant and it, it gets deposited in the tissue as AA amyloid. And you can see this in many chronic inflammatory conditions like rheumatoid arthritis. You can see this in lupus, in irritable bowel disease, in malignancies, familial Mediterranean fever. All of these conditions are inflammatory conditions. And because you have positive, sorry, inflammation, this is going to cause an increase in acute phase reactants, which is going to cause an increase in likelihood of AA deposition occurring. All right. That is the secondary amyloidosis. The other type you need to know is dialysis-related amyloidosis. This is actually a very high-yield uh, topic because a lot of people forget forget about this type of amyloid, but also it's very easy to get tested on because people forget. So this is actually a beta-2 macroglobulin deposition that's occurring in dialysis-related amyloidosis. This is going to be seen in patients who have ESRD, end-stage renal disease, or long-term dialysis, and the proteins that tend to deposit Deposit, end up depositing in the joint. So if you see someone who has end-stage renal disease, who's on dialysis, who's having joint problems and painful joints, start thinking about dialysis-related amyloidosis in which you have beta-2 macroglobulin being deposited. The clinical manifestations is going to be renal disease, right? So you have renal issues. That is usually a common. You are going to have some sort of nephrotic syndrome. Um, and this is the most commonly involved organ when you're talking about dialysis related. It makes sense because you have dialysis happening. You already have a predisposition of developing a kidney disease. You can have cardiac issues and that can lead to restrictive or restrictive cardiomyopathy or even arrhythmias, right? Because you are depositing some sort of protein that's going to cause a decrease or a delay in the signal transduction that's happening in the cardiac cells that's one thing you can have GI synthesis, uh, GI symptoms excuse me like macroglossia hepatosplenomegaly, megaly and even malabsorption can occur you can have hematologic issues where patients can be uh, bruising very easily you can even have neurologic issues because that amyloid the beta 2 macroglobulin can actually deposit in the nerves and cause neuropathy and you can also have musculoskeletal syndromes like we talked about right here where you can have joint problems, especially uh, uh, in any type of actually joint. So that is a dialysis related beta 2 macroglobulin uh, amyloidosis. You need to know this. In my opinion, this is a very high yield topic, one of the more high yield ones in this lecture because most people forget about this type of deposition. So commit this to memory. Just don't miss it when you see some sort of vignette where a patient has renal kidney or renal failure or renal issues along with other systemic issues, maybe even joint problems. If that's what's happening, you need to start con considering dialysis related amyloidosis. Now that we've talked about the systemic amyloidosis, we're going to start discussing more localized or the localized amyloidosis cases and the proteins that are associated with this type of amyloidosis. In this case, you're going to see amyloid deposition occurring in a single organ. That is what localized means. So that means because you're going to see it in a local organ, you're going to have localized symptoms occurring. There are many different types of localized amyloidosis, and these are the types you need to know. I highly, highly recommend you take some time 
and actually memorize this chart. Memorize this chart because in case you get a question on any of these conditions, you should know what is happening. The ones I highly recommend you have a good understanding of is senile cardiac amyloidosis, Alzheimer's disease, and type 2 diabetes because these are very easily forgotten, but they're very high yield because of the rate in which they occur. So let's just talk about senile cardiac my, uh, amyloidosis. In this condition, you're going to have the normal transthyretin proteins, TTR, being deposited in the, uh, the cardiac, in the cardiac ventricles mainly, okay? And because of that, because you're, you're predominantly affecting the cardiac ventricles, this is going to be worse than the AL amyloidosis that we were talking about earlier. This is going to cause more, more harm to the cardiac myocytes, especially in the ventricles, and you can see worsening cases. Now, the reason it's called senile cardiac amyloidosis is because this usually occurs in patients who are older and of a later age. The second condition is Alzheimer's disease, in which you're going have a, a beta amyloidosis. So if you see a beta, start thinking about Alzheimer's disease. A beta amyloidosis or the a beta amyloid is going to actually be cleaved from an APP amyloid precursor protein on chromosome 21. This is very important. Remember, trisomy 21, right? Trisomy 21 actually has a third 21 chromosome. That means you are going to increase the production of amyloid precursor protein, which gives people who have trisomy 21 Down syndrome a higher propensity of developing Alzheimer's disease at an earlier age because they're developing more uh, APP, which can cause more a beta deposition occurring. Okay, very important. This is the, the clinical tie-in to Alzheimer's, but also to uh, a Down syndrome and trisomy 21 related Down syndrome, not the Robertsonian translocation. And then finally, we're going to be talking about type 2 diabetes. In type 2 diabetes, you have islet cell or islet amyloid poly polypeptide, IAPP. And this is going to be caused by deposition of amylin in the pancreatic islets, which makes sense, right? In type 2 diabetes, you are burning out your pancreas. And essentially, you're going to end up depositing amylin in the pancreas. And that's going to further the destruction of the pancreas. Very, very important. So these are the main three you need to know. I do recommend that if you are a gunner and you want to get that you know, high 90 percentile exam points, can, um, remember these two as well, the medullary thyroid cancer where you have calcitonin deposition, right? And then in isolated atrial amyloidosis, you have ANP. ANP, remember, is one of the proteins that is released from the atria, uh, atrial natriuretic peptide. That is the, de the protein that's going to be deposited. And if you see atrial conditions that are happening, atrial deposition or atrial issues, you should be considering ANP. Now, that is a localized amyloidosis. Again, this is very high yield. So I'm going to write this one more time for you guys. So just to, you know, drive this to drive this back home, I would say consider saving the folder, consider saving the slide, take a photo of it, and commit it to memory. Now, hereditary amyloidosis are also very important, and you should know what is going on. Essentially, these are going to be several different types of familial amyloid cardiopathy. Uh, that's one condition that can happen where you're going to have a mutated transthyretin protein. Now, remember, Remember that the transthyretin protein actually occurs in senile cardiac amyloidosis like we discussed earlier. This is normal. The TTR, as you age, you're going to have more TTR, which is going to cause a, a increased propensity of the deposition of TTR. That is normal. In familial amyloid cardiomyopathy, you have a mutated TTR or ATTR, and that's going to cause deposition to occur early on. That means you're also going to see ventricular endomyocardial deposition similar to the senile cardiac amyloidosis, except this is going to happen in someone who's younger, and it's going to lead to restrictive cardiomyopathies and arrhythmias. 5% of African Americans are actually carriers of this, mut uh, this mutant allele. So this is going to be more commonly seen in African Americans. Let's just write that really quickly. So more common in African American race. 
Then you have the familial amyloid polyneuropathies. In this case, you're going to have the mutated amyloid, uh, the mutated transthyretin protein that's going to function as your uh, amyloid depositing protein. It's going to be depositing in your nerves, and this is an autosomal dominant condition, and nerve, nerve lesions are going to occur. Like I said, it's because of the deposition of ATTR. So with that being said, we have now covered majority of you, everything you need to know for amyloid and amyloid deposition. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more. I hope this was uh, educational for you, and we'll see you back here real soon.